Welcome to Our Energy Matters with Anthony Mana and Dina Marie. Aloha. Aloha to you too. Here we are. Episode number 63. That What that means to folks out there is probably nothing except that we've been meeting on Zoom 63 times, and this is our 63rd time, to explore our life, our lives, to explore our spiritual self, definitely, absolutely, and to, um, and to think about, like today, to think about what freedom means. Like it's, it, it always reminds me that we're reaching into the basics of staying alive, but staying alive well. And, you know, and, uh, and I've been listening, I've been listening a lot to a, a, a Buddhist nun. She's talking a lot about compassion, you know, and uh, I just, I really like the way she, she talks about it. So it's like, it's like, that's the kind of thing that I always feel that um, I find, um, and I'm going to hold up your book, I find in your book that I'll recite the title of very soon and people should see the crystals on the front that's that's your uh, media <laughs> to bring people together you know and and so uh it, it's it's a really it's a really uh enlivening and uplifting time for me to meet like this and what i usually do and i like to explain this to people is that when i work through your book each week i I, I, I am a writer, and so what I do is I find illuminations and enlightenment that um, helps me bring my life together in a way that really uh, is very satisfying, very fulfilling. And so then I write a piece, as I did today, that I will read in just a little bit. But it's, it's all based on, um, you know, our energy matters, the art of crystal reading, which is Dina Marie's title. And then she has... She, she, then she, she was bold enough to have another title, Learn How to Manifest Your Heartfelt Intentions. And I, in one of the sessions, not too long ago, I had to say, what do you mean in heartfelt attention? We're not doing that today. No, <laughs> <laughs> but we will get back to it again, because I think um, it has become a signal to me how to organize my life in a very positive way. To, um, to state my heartfelt intention, usually at the beginning of each day or be before my meditation period, you know? And it's, uh, it, it's something we'll get back to. Today I say, salota zibona. Hello and good day to our Romanian listeners and viewers. And today's title is Nurturing Personal Freedom. And so I read here, I amble over to Dina Marie's nourishing soul light energy as I call forth the compassionate, oh, there's that word again, loving kindness graciously offered in her soul changing manual of matters and manuals spiritual. She christened this book with the startling title that awakens the promise of enlightenment by recovering the gifts of the imagination and opening the way to every seeker's, well, client's, uniqueness and individuality. She anointed her book as such, Our Energy Matters, The Art of Crystal Reading, and she further spark bright, brightened its divinely endowed ruminations, healing prescriptions, and guided practices. Can I say freestyle gymnastics I really think that, I mean, I know it sounds kind of strange, but it just came to me that it's kind of like, woo, 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 you know, and cartwheels and then jumping off the trampoline, you know, and that type of thing in order to come to the recognition of what it means to look up and be alive in the here and now. And well, so for, for her uh, clients and her seekers, for how to gaze inward with the eyes of the soul and celebrate the gift of life. And she says, and as I said, it's the idea of how to manifest your heartfelt intentions. Quite suddenly, without any warning, inspiration 
brought me to a revelatory threshold along Dean and Marie's pathways, rock smooth by multitudes of wanderers preceding us to the shoreline. And that means, see, for me, Dean and Marie, when I talk about that, I think of you on your island and the fact that you love to go down there and you love to go swimming and you appreciate so much that whole environment there on the West Coast. I stood inspired, vision unified and clarified on one site by the famed author, Charlotte Bronte's awakening to a freedom burnished by, uh, an ins this is her insight, I I'm quoting her here. I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will. And, and we looked at that last in our last session. And then in, in an insight, the, the insight blinked, flashed me <laughs> so that I aligned Charlotte Bronte's free human being with the redemptive freedom, our celestial artist. Now, who's the celestial artist? Dina Marie entices her seekers to experience along the pathways where she so lovingly, so compassionately places joyful, practical, and accessible, and even playful and entertaining healing remedies, constructive counsel, and alluring soul, mind, body intentions, sustained and blessed by our divinely inspired alchemists, refined art of crystal readings and chakra illuminations. Was that one sentence or was an entire paragraph? I can yeah. hardly breathe. <laughs> so all of a sudden I went back to your book because of Charlotte Bronte and that, that, that really sparked something in me. So I went back to your book and I looked for signposts of freedom. And so Dina Marie, I'm gonna ask you to slip slide or you could even arabesque a few high steps into your, cause I know you love to dance. Into or do a, your, a cartwheel. Oh, good, like good, good, good. Part. <laughs> oh, good, 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 okay. So steps into your celestial alchemist persona and tell us about freedom of the soul and heart and mind. Tell us a uh, personal, personal freedom announced in your book. Here, here's one quote from your book. I read only as high as I reach, can I grow? Only as far as I seek, can I go? Only as deep as I look, can I see? Only as much as I dream, can I be? I see flashlights of freedom all over the place with that quotation. What do you say? Well, in my, I'm it's popping into my mind is, is I always say get on the dance floor, but you, you can identify with that. Like there's something you want to do. And then you start thinking about what everyone else is going to think. And then you stop yourself from doing it. And you're mad at yourself because you really had that inspiration or that spark to just get out there. And then you realize no one's going to dance. So you can talk yourself out of it pretty soon you're not dancing and I think that's what freedom is freedom is like that five-year-old I talk about in the book who just in the middle of a basketball game must have played some music somewhere and started dancing around and was was in the present moment but how many times do we talk ourselves in our own mind to not speak up or to not raise our hand or you know, I'm just going back to as a child that's how I always was keep your mouth shut don't you know think for yourself do what we say but I just think that freedom is the spontaneity of having an idea which is the crown chakra and then just doing it and um i know for me i i really was that gymnastics lady i mean pre 2020 i was that person and then we were told all these things we couldn't do it was a bit of an imprisonment for me because i'm super spontaneous and i was telling people how i i used to talk to strangers and it would be exactly the person i needed to talk to because I don't have the person talking me out of that in my head. Now I have that person a little bit. So I told you, I want to get my rocks out again. And I'll go somewhere and I'll sit with a stranger at a picnic table, do a chakra reading, and they'll be my best friends forever. You know? It's yeah, and, and, and I think it's taking the risk, right? I mean, it's moving, it's moving beyond, you know? And, uh, and sometimes just, just not stopping ourselves to move forward. Like, like in prison, we're in a prison. And in the olden days, we made the prison. 
you know, and then I talked myself into being myself 100% of the time. And I had freedom because I did what I want when I wanted. And so just recently, you know, we had our hands tied. I have to say that there was a lot of things like you and I haven't even met each other in person yet. Right. You know, we know each other. You're like one of my best friends, but thank God for this, you know, but in the end, I could have talked myself out of it and said, oh, he, why would he want to talk to me every week on the phone? That's stupid, Dina. Don't yeah, think that. Yeah. I, know, I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, or, or I, or, the way I come at it is because of my academic training, I would say, oh, come on, what do I have to offer? You know, because it's, in the academic world, it's like, well, if your ideas aren't brilliant, then who's going to listen? You know, and so you're, you're in a sense, it's, it's like being stifled a lot you know, until, until you can free yourself and just say, that's, that's a lot of BS. Of course. I mean, I'm going to, what am I going to, I'm only, what am I going to do? I'm going to say what's on my mind and what I've thought about and what I've meditated on. And, and I think I have some good ideas about what edu in that, that world, about what, what education can mean, you know, um, and that type of thing. No, I, I know it's, it's really, um, we don't have to stifle ourselves. Um, and I here I, I have another one. I, I this is a pearl that I found. You say I freely communicate to others my personal choices and desires. I know that I, you probably recognize that, don't you? Well, be, you're so sweet because I was going to explain that, and you just read it, and I didn't know <laughs> because that's what your heart felt intentions are. It's your throat chakra and your heart communicating to another person how you feel. And how many people are unable to, like, that's why we're happy when we have a conversation, because we can talk to each other. But if you're overthinking or thinking about what you're going to say next, or you think twice about what you're going to say, you're not even present. The present, the gift is being with somebody engaged and have an, a heartfelt conversation. So that's your heartfelt intentions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, but it, it comes down to loving yourself and having compassion towards yourself. And then you kind of weed out people. You don't kind of, you do. If you're in a conversation where you can't talk, you need to leave. <laughs> I mean, how many times do we listen to somebody and it's not fulfilling us and we've wasted our precious time. And I used to do it all. And I was going to do it again. I felt bad, felt bad for somebody who's hurt me terribly. And I thought I would go, try to save the day. And then, you know, I sat with myself and said, I don't have the energy to save another human being. So who can I save? Myself. Yourself. And then spend the time I love, people I love. That's right. Yeah. And loving kindness. I mean, when you think about loving kindness as, as reaching out, but it also has to be, it starts right here, you know, in the heart, you know, and then, um, then we, I mean, the, I always feel like the more I'm, I'm loving myself and being kind to myself, the better I'm going to be to do that in, uh, outside myself to people around me, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, wa I walked into a, a clerk in a, depart in a grocery store today and she was very friendly and she said, and, and how are you today? And I said, well, and how are you? And we, we kind of like, it was instantaneous re a, a relation, you know? And I said, oh, well, I'm always telling everybody I just turned 80. And she goes, oh, you don't look at all like, and I said, no, no, don't say that, please. You're going to hex me. I, and then she, thought, she looked at me and said, what does that mean? And I said, no, you can't say nice things all the time because I'll be, I'll be plagued by it, you know? And, and I said, no, it's, I understand. And I thank you very much for the compliment, but it was, it was really, um, it was an interesting conversation because I really felt like I connected with her and I don't know if I'll ever see her again in that grocery store, but it sure was, it sure was a lot of fun. And that's the present moment. And I have to say too, that's where the, the magic is because she could have had a day where she wanted to quit or something. And just you having that quick interaction is actually God or spirit weaving a web of relationship, which that's what we're supposed to do. Not overthink everything we're going to say or pick out the person we're going to talk to next, you know? So that was a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is a good thing. And I think sometimes what happens is, especially in situations like that, where you're being serviced is that you, you find somebody who seems to be really distracted or not wanting to be there. And the more I'm outgoing to that person and just, you know, make, making a little bit of, of a pleasant experience, whether through humor or some other kind of thing, then they open up, 
you know, and it's and it just feels so good, you know. Well, and I started that. Uh, so and so says, someone says, so how's your day going? I'm having a party. <laughs> That's what I would, people go, so where, where is it at? And where, who's coming? And I'm like, no, no, every day is a party. And I started that at a grocery store I worked at because I had to answer the phone. How's your day going? Having a party. <laughs> Terrific. I love that. I mean, I, I always, I really, I, I, you said that before and I think about that a lot. I mean, it's a good, it's such a great way to start the day. You know, um, you know, as oh, I- Oh yeah, yeah. And I say to the guys I work with, getting the party started. And yeah, then my really. grandma says it first thing in the morning, come on grandma, I'm getting the party started. Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. All right, so do we have, yeah, well, I think we probably are coming to our conclusion here, but I think that, um, you know, I, 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 I I found I found other signposts of freedom throughout, you know, and I and I say at the end here, I say, thank you, uh, dear Lady Grace. And that's the other my other christening that I did with you for teaching and sharing and illuminating about your your seasoned sense of freedom. And when I say seasoned, I mean, that's a word that I use with you, because in your book, you have stories of where you helped people. You know, and I think that that over time must have seasoned you to even be better present, you know, as you went through your years of, of Reiki and hypnosis. You know, it wasn't hypnosis. What was it? Hip, hip Hypnotherapy. I, and I call it guided imagery. And I think the beauty of it is if I sat down with a stranger and we had coffee, we'd, we'd talk. But if I sat down with a stranger and they pulled seven stones and I put them on the rock where, where they fit and they're missing their throat chakra, I'm going to say something like maybe you're holding something in and someone's hurt your feeling. And they're like, you know, on the way here, my best friend called and she yelled at me, you know, and then we'd have a conversation and then she'd be like, oh, you know, she's going through chemo. I don't know. Maybe she it wasn't even anything about me. And by the time she leaves, she talked about what was really bothering her. Yeah. Instead of like an hour with me trying to talk about other things that really weren't relevant to what was going on in her life at that moment. So that's what I love about the chakra readings is five minutes into it. They're like, can I tell you, can I tell you something I've never told anybody? Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. No, I love that. And I see that in the book. I mean, there's so many times when the crystal, when the, 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 the crystal itself becomes such as a, a medium for spiritual awakening, you know, and, uh, and, and, and telling and, and letting people know that they can be kind to themselves and they can love themselves is what a gift. Uh, so I say, you are restoring souls to a wellness marked by serenity, community, godness, spiritness, alive to a rapid succession of choices and glorified intentions. And that I think is a lot about freedom in that, in that one statement. So folks, if you want to move closer to Dina Marie's wisdom, then listen to her weekly radio show, Lift Your Spirits. It's on 1150 AM KKNW, but if you go to her website, dina-marie.com, you'll find information about how to connect with that Friday morning program, um, show, I should say. She is also very active on Facebook. And I started thinking about Facebook and I, I think what I'm gonna do for uh, your Facebook page, what I'm gonna do for soon, I wanna go through there and collect some of those beautiful, illuminating, sparkling um, quotations that you use for, from other people, from other illuminators, you know, and that it, it uh, they're so uplifting, you know, and I'd like to do a series of those with you so that you could say, well, what I meant by this, you know, I love them because they're all very, they're all very metaphoric, if I can say that. I mean, sometimes very subtle. So, and then, so that's on her face, on her Facebook page, you'll find uh, a lot of insight into chakra energy blockage and prescriptions and, and startling photographs of the island that she lives on. My website for an interview with Dina Marie is anthonymanabooks.com. And if you go there to the media section, you'll find the Podbean podcasts, interviews with people like Dina Marie, shakers and movers. 
people who you know can yeah can illuminate us all and so you'll find a lot of uh, writers poets illustrators etc and also you'll find a lot about if you go to my website I do a lot of I, I offer a lot of information about how to read and write with kids and teens and tweens goodbye everyone goodbye Dina Marie <laughs> Thank you, Anthony Mana. See you next week. Next week. Okay. Take take good care, everybody. Bye. Bye.